Ever since I discovered the site of Fragrantica and I noticed that perfumes are made by individual notes, becoming more experienced in perfumes, you start appreciating what these notes do. It's difficult to assess them when you haven't smelled them in their pure form, but I do have some pure oils in my room now, which is very useful. So today I thought I'd create a video for you guys where I discuss some of my favorite notes and some of my favorite perfumery in each note. So one fragrance for each note that has that note as one of its big main characters that really brings out the good sides of these notes and not necessarily its negative sides because most perfumes have negative aspects to them <laughs> if they overuse the certain notes. It's people who overuse civets in their perfume can attest to this. If you didn't get that joke in the intro, civet is a note that comes from the anal gland of a small civet animal. So if you overuse that, I'm sure you can appreciate how that can be a negative thing in the formulation of a perfume. We have almost run out of Mr. Fragrance, our first release. I wouldn't say Mr. Fragrance is a release that has one particular note that stands out as its main character. It's more well blended, it's more of a large composition of lots of different things. As I speak, guys, we've almost run out of Mr. Fragrance in the USA. We only have 39 bottles left. We have 133 bottles left in the UK, 89 in Australia and 88 in Canada. This will be our first batch gone after this. And then after that, we'll have to get a new batch ready, which will take a very long time, at least four months probably. The idea of our brand Asian Fragrance is that overall we create to you guys a well-rounded collection by the end of it. Five different fragrances for five different occasions because I don't feel there's any brand out there that actually does this at the moment for men. This will be your stable, reliable collection. And I, th I think I've made a decision now. I think I'm gonna stick to it. Because the idea of Atrium Fragrance is that we're going for creativity, I was thinking to myself, you know, what do we stand for the most? I think it is creativity in the end. It's practicality and creativity combined in a perfect marriage or in a perfume brand. I wanted to create this kind of brand because I don't think this kind of brand really exists at the moment in the fragrance industry. So what I've decided is that after we make our next batch of Mr. Fragrance, that'll be it for Mr. Fragrance. It'll be a discontinued scent um, and each scent thereafter will be a one batch release. So our next release, the date night scent, which is incredible by the way. I have, I've decided the DNA on it, that's it. I'll do a public reaction video for that guys. So you'll see the reactions it's gonna get for you, especially from the ladies. And what, but what's gonna happen is that that release is gonna be one batch only. Then after that, probably gonna be our office fragrance, one batch only, and then so on. And it's gonna just cycle through the five different variations. This keeps our brand dynamic, keeps us honest, and makes sure we're always staying creative. So we're always coming up with new ideas and new DNAs. So if you're a person who, you know, didn't want a versatile scent from our brand being a blue DNA, then that's okay, because eventually we'll cycle back to the versatile option and make a different kind of DNA, making things a little more exciting. So yeah, guys, make sure if you want Mr. Fragrance, you get it now before we stop it completely. All right, guys, let's get into the list. Let's start off with the note of Iris. When I discovered Iris in perfumery, I think my first fragrance was Dior Homme O, the original Prada Long, the precursor to that DNA. And I appreciated, I mean, I heard people online talk about how it smells like a lipstick bag, like makeup. And I think I know why they say that. Iris can be a very challenging note and that's what makes it so exciting because it just stands out from all the, the boring generic fragrances on the market that are all about, you know, woods, ambers, they're very, you know, citruses, some sort of generic combination like that. I'm thinking like Hugo Boss, for example, <laughs> or maybe Mont Blanc. So I think Iris is excited to wear it in a man's, man's perfume. It's one of the most expensive perfume ingredients in the world. You can definitely tell the difference between, you know, an Iris replica, so a synthetic Iris and real Iris. Real Iris has an earthiness to it because Iris actually doesn't come from the flower, it comes from the roots of the plant. And it takes about four or five years to harvest. It's very expensive to bring out that note. So that's why real iris is one of the most expensive perfume ingredients in the world. It's the same value as oud, so it's around 50,000 pounds per kilo. And that's why I think Amouage Reflection 45 is my favorite iris perfume right now because it has real iris in it to my nose. Is this an expensive fragrance? Yes, just a little bit. It might be a little bit expensive, but um, if, and for transparency's sake, this was gifted to me by Max Aroma. I need to be transparent with you guys. However, that doesn't mean it hasn't become one of my most favorite perfumes, even with the price tag. 
I think if I had smelled this in store, I definitely may consider buying it still. And I think it's definitely something you should definitely check out. This is not a blind buy. It's so expensive to be, it's too expensive to be a blind buy. But like Reflection Man, I wasn't the, the biggest advocate for it. I think it's a nicely done perfume, but it kind of didn't wow me personally. It was white floral sandalwood, so it sort of had a similar Limal DNA, but more bright, summery and luxurious. Definitely a nice scent, but Reflection 45, it is art in a bottle, in my opinion. Not only have they made it more complex with some more rich creaminess coming from more vanilla and more iris here. So the iris is very thick, powdery. They've taken the luxurious, luxuriousness of the original Reflection Man and I think 10 x it. This smells insanely luxurious and it smells so intense and thick, probably because it's a 45% concentration perfume, which is just insane. That's not even extra the perf parfum. That's as, that this should be in its own category, in my opinion. <laughs> it's pretty much pure oil at this point. So I can see why it's so expensive. It smells expensive. And I think it's not a bad idea for the industry to have options like this that are worth the price tag. You know, they, I think they can justify the price tag with the, the quality that's here. Over 12 hours longevity, soft to medium projection. I think also the versatility here is what makes it so fantastic. It's an iris phrase that's done so extremely creatively. I can be wore day, night, it's sexy, luxurious, it's a rich man's fragrance. It knows who its target audience is and I appreciate that. I respect this, I love this fragrance. Let's talk about the note of lavender. There's lavender oil, which is more of a top note, there's lavender absolute, which, so basically these two notes are, are extracted, they extract the lavender in two different ways. And lavender absolute can smell very old school, medicinal, and lavender oil is very sharp and clean, very soapy. So you gotta use this note correctly if you wanna bring it into a modern fashion. If you wanna make it modern, not old school smelling, then you don't wanna smell like your grandpa, <laughs> you gotta do something clever with lavender. And I think this fragrance here has created one of the greatest fresh signature scents out there on the market currently. It is the Har of Signature Pour Homme. One of the first fragrances as an influencer I was able to get gifted, not this bottle, I paid full price for this bottle, because I'm talking about a, like a two ml sample that George himself sent to me from all the way from the US back when I was a little mini micro influencer on Instagram. I was very happy and proud of that, just because I, I seen that this bottle with this fragrance for so long, I couldn't acquire it in the UK for ages. And as soon as it came to the UK, I, I pretty much bought it very quickly. And I'm very happy I got this. This is such a beautiful scent. This is like soapy lavender barbershop goodness. So the traditional man's, man's, man's aftershave DNA in modern times, it doesn't smell outdated, mixed with a lot of ambers, a lot of Middle Eastern nuances here. They've brought the West and the Middle East of styles, the style of perfumery together here. I think George has done a fantastic job with this. If you want a barbershop style that has oud, has myrrh in it, has sweet ambers, it's very clean, but at the same time, intense, complex, and very elegant as well. I think a man who's 25 years old and above should wear something like this. Uh, I think you will have a very good signature scent. Again, day and night, a more clean signature. If you want to smell fresh and clean with a lot of nuance to your scent, you will love this. So try it if you can, it's a horror signature pour on the original. Honey, which I believe mainly comes from the base note called Miel Blanc by a perfume house, which I can't remember the name of. I think, is it Amaris or Steimery? I don't know. Uh, maybe Editing Unicorn can put it on the screen for you guys. Miel Blanc uh, or Honey has, obviously, it's not obviously gonna be real honey. You can get beeswax extract, I believe, in perfumery, but I think most of the time it's gonna be a synthetic replication. You can smell a bit floral, a bit obviously very sweet like honey, you can smell a bit animalic like real honey does. And I think perfumes that do a realistic honey accord is beautiful. And I think honey can be annoying though sometimes in perfumery because it can smell very feminine. A lot of female perfumes have it and it can smell too cloying, but this fragrance does the balance beautifully. L'On Vol de Cartier Eau de Toilette. Gentlemen, we finally have our daily, easy to wear, fresh honey fragrance. Citruses, honey, and musks. Bright, transparent, airy, but still got a sexy sweetness from the honey. Cartier, you know, I wanted to get Declaration Don Soir by Cartier when I, because all the reviewers were talking about it online, but I couldn't find it, got discontinued. So I went to the Cartier section of the department store, tried most of their fragrances. A lot of their stuff is either really challenging or really generic, actually, but I think this gets it right in the middle. Creativity, that's still extremely accessible. That's what I want to achieve with my brand as well. 
creativity, access, accessibility at the same time. Sort of like when you think of fragrances like Leighton or Aventus as well, or, you know, original, in the old school Aventus. <laughs> so I think, yeah, L'Enville de Cartier is really just one of the best honey fragrances out there. Now, of course, there's other fragrances like Naxos, but Naxos isn't as easy to wear, I think. It's too elegant <laughs> sometimes. But L'Enville de Cartier wear it pretty much all year round. You can wear it in, maybe don't wear it in the summertime, it's the only season I wouldn't recommend it in. You're gonna get good performance six to eight hours of the moderate projection. It's sexy, and I think, I, you know, I would I would wear this on a date at any, any time of the year, actually. This is really good stuff. Now, we mentioned Oud previously. If you don't know what Oud is, it is a note that comes from a, an Aquilarius tree, I believe the tree is called, in Southeast Asia, where if the tree gets infected in the right way with a fungus, it produces this rotting resin in its uh, tree bark, which can be extracted. It's very hard to extract, hence its price as well, £50,000 per kilo, one of the most expensive perfume ingredients in the world. Of course, it's going to be woody. It smells a bit dirty. Some people can describe oud as barnyard animalic. It's a little bit fecal, actually, uh, in a woody note. So I think when you want to tell if a fragrance that has real oud in it, it's usually going to have a slight barnyard fecal aspect to it. But real oud can be actually very challenging, but of course it depends on what oud you have and which variations, which countries in the world you're getting it from. I'm not going to bore you though. Oud can be very challenging and I think can be very generic because it usually comes with a rose combo. A lot of perfume releases do that safe rose and oud combination. It works very well, fair enough, but you know, you want to see something more creative, more interesting. Apart from the Marley's Pegasus Exclusive. I think easily one of the best perfumes currently on the market, easily for a man. An original Pegasus, I didn't care for it. Again, this is some kind of similar like to, to Reflection Man. I didn't care for the original, but then this just absolutely blew me away. It, it is Reflection, it's, it's, it's Pegasus made a lot more woody, with Gaiac wood and oud. The oud is used a lot more creatively, it's still sweet, but still freshens up and previously too sweet fragrance DNA. It still has a lot of character from the almond metallic notes in the fragrance. So it's just got a beautiful character. If a man wants to smell unique, at the same time rich, still sound, at the same time still very accessible, this does oud in a very accessible way. Again, similar to Zaharov, it brings Western style perfumery from the original Pegasus with the Middle Eastern style with the oud and the Gaiac wood. Gorgeous, gorgeous, rich man scent, lasts over 12 hours. I'm wearing it right now, and I think this is easily a 10 out of 10 for me. Previously, whenever I wore Pegasus, I would feel sorry for people around me. I sometimes wore it to work as well, just when I was testing it out, even with a few sprays, it was too much. It was, it was very milky as well, surprisingly milky for a perfume. And I think that, that would get annoying, but this would be a lot more difficult to annoy people with. This is just a lot more balanced. It's perfect, actually. It's just perfect, what can I say? Let's discuss tonka bean, one of the oldest aroma chemicals made in modern perfumery, usually brought about by the note of coumarin. So it's a lab synthetic molecule that's very cheap and very versatile. Can smell a little bit like hay, it's, so it's very sweet. Everyone, most people know what tonka bean is, very sweet, smooth, almost lotion-like, a little bit marzipan-like. But if you overdo it, it can smell very <laughs> much like a chemical. A little bit hay-like, as people say. It's like warm, sweet hay, which is weird. You kind of have to smell it to appreciate it. This fragrance has done an overdose of that, but I think it's done it so beautifully. Everyone needs to know about this fragrance. I've already mentioned it before. Mancera's Tonka Cola. One of the first fragrances I received as a gift as well was uh, Roger's Enigma, which is actually a full bottle I received previously. Back again when I was a micro-influencer on Instagram, I was, I was thinking to myself, this is incredible. You can actually make an impact and you know, <laughs> real <laughs> results can come from being online and just talking about your passion. So I thought yeah, that was amazing. And I liked how that fragrance had a Coca-Cola vibe to it. And I was always looking for other fragrances. So Pure Excess by Paco Rabanne had it, but it wasn't, I don't know, that fragrance wasn't amazing. So I was always looking for another fragrance that had a Coca-Cola note again to it. And I think Tonka Cola does it in a lot more um, mainstream approachable way. Enigma is a little bit challenging. It's very mature. This is more youthful and very surprisingly balanced. If you want a Coca-Cola fresh, casual signature you can wear pretty much all year round apart from summer, then Tonka Cola does it beautifully. Um, of course it's got tonka bean in it, it's got a coconut cola note, it kind of think of a fizzy cherry coke as well with rum in here, but it doesn't, it's not like an evening scent that's, you know, difficult to rock, it's actually very balanced, it's so nicely balanced, it has like a nice sweetness from patchouli as well. So this is just, yeah, versatile, extremely long lasting, over 12 hours, the Mancera performance is not lacking here, here at all, medium amount of projection. So that, again, this is beautiful. I think this is definitely 
a stronger fragrance than the one Mancera usually produces actually. This is actually really <laughs> took it to the next level for the brand, so well done to them. I would give us a, a 9 out of 10 overall. It can be a little bit cloying from the tonka meat. If you smell it too close to your skin, in the air it's better. Sexy, unisex, but leaning masculine. Check it out. And finally, the note of amber, which is not a note at all. Amber fragrances. <laughs> so amber is sort of like a conceptual idea in perfumery that actually is an accord, usually with labdanum, vanilla, and some sort of musk, maybe ethylene bracelet, for, I think is one of the usual ones. So it's always an accord. It creates an idea of amber, so like a balsamic sweet warmth that isn't quite like the edible vanilla that every perfume has. So it still has vanilla in the accord, but yeah, basically a lot of perfumes use it. It's one of the, the, you know, the base foundational accords that perfumers will learn. And this is one of the best at the moment, in my opinion. <laughs> Chanel's Port Monsieur Eau de Parfum. Mentioned in my previous Chanel buying guide, Port Monsieur takes, again, modern day barbershops, scent DNA, adds and amps it up with extreme Chanel elegance. Amber, like, <sighs> I went to the Chanel shop and I, they, well, I bought the, I bought this with uh, Egoist for the buying guide and they accidentally gave me the Pont Monceau Eau de Toilette, which was very annoying because I had to go back. It's King's Cross as well, which is a very packed station, if anyone knows. It's like, ah, oh, God. But the, I, had to, I had to get the Eau de Parfum. I think it just smells a lot more modern than the Eau de Toilette. It is if Tom Ford's Beau de Jour was made a bit more interesting, in my opinion. Beau de Jour gives you a lot of compliments. It's very loud, it's beautiful, it's sexy. Uh, and my friend put me onto that fragrance from him wearing initially, when it, back when it was a private blend fragrance. But Pour Moi Monsieur kind of tones it down a bit. It's not as good performing, maybe six hours with a moderate projection, but it's so incredibly classy. If you just want to smell classy, you're kind of guy who doesn't follow the mainstream. You're not some, the guy who gets drunk every night, goes out partying all the time, be someone who's just very uh, diligent, hardworking, stays very calm <laughs> most days. Then this is like that kind of signature for you. You dress well and you're just, confidence in your own skin. You don't have to uh, just scream for confidence. You let it be known. You People discover it on you naturally. So I think it's for that kind of personality and I think it's a masterpiece. If performance was better, I would give us a 10 out of 10. I will give it a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching guys. Did you enjoy this video? I try to mix mainstream perfume talk with you know educational notes content. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. If you'd like to see more of that style in, in our videos, let me know because then I will carry on making more videos. And of course, as I mentioned before, Mr. Fragrant has almost run out. So if you want to buy it, and if you're on the edge of thinking about buying it, I would say just buy it, try it for yourself. As I always say, you can always, so the main product is, it was 100 ml, it's cellophane wrapped. As long as you keep that cellophane intact, we give you a complimentary sample. It's an online brand, so you just try the sample on its own. If you don't like it, send us back the cellophane intact 100 ml product, you get all your money back. So it's a fair deal. You try the fragrance before you fully commit. I'll leave a link in the description down below, guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos on perfume notes, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.